here's what I know. People are balkanizing. The parasitic left has always used government funding to fund their own projects, their own art operations, you name it. The left also usually are managers over disenfranchised groups of people that live in government housing or kind of warehousing foster children, things like that. It's what they do. It's their business. And they don't know any better. So if they see society collapsing, they see that as more for them to feed on. So the big problem with the reality equation that Mr. Dent's talking about is we're talking about how to make things better once the correction comes. We're talking about ways to protect ourselves but also stabilize the government. They're looking at ways to overthrow everything. And that's why I'm saying it's more critical than ever to financially support shows like InfoWars. Why it's more important than ever to exercise your free speech and wear the new won't tread on me incredible uh, Gadsden flag Culpepper Minutemen shirt that we have at InfoWarsStore.com because in the future, more than anything, it's going to be financially supporting organizations and groups and people that are fighting for your basic worldview and your way of life. This is something conservatives never really do or libertarians never do. We kind of just live our own lives and run our own lives and we don't want to run other people's lives. Well, if you don't want somebody running your life, you're going to have to get politically involved. You're going to have to get financially involved. And, and, and not just educate yourself with books like Zero Hour that, again, I'm going to be reading this weekend uh, by Harry S. Dent, but the book that Savage wrote or the information we cover. Uh, briefly, I want to play this clip as he mentioned worldwide revolutions. Countries working with countries is a great idea. It opens up markets, more products, more innovation, more ideas. Anybody in any type of business will tell you, more people, more business, more connections, more, more ideas. It's the uh, opposite of stagnation. But you try to bring in and repopulate Europe with third world Muslim populations uh, and then the, the left's there to get them all on welfare, that's a disaster. You want to put an EU army out to take over countries because they want to pull out. Well, that's the fastest way to make them pull out even quicker. And you can say, well, Spain will keep Catalan in for a while longer. Doesn't matter. Once the people know they're captured, it's like some guy that's chaining his wife up when he goes to work. She's going to get loose someday. You're going to go to jail or she's not. She's going to be long gone. And we've we've reached that point where the left is trying. Who isn't even the left? Just people that feel like they're the left are there to dominate folks. It's not working anymore. So I want to ask Mr. Dent, historically looking at the charts, how this revolution fleshes out, how it could look. But he's predicted it. I predicted it. Ron Paul's predicted it. So many others have predicted it. The CIA people we've had on like Steve Pachinik had predicted it 10 years ago that the EU would fail and things would break up. It's here. What does that mean as the central controllers push authoritarianism? Here is a clip of Nigel Farage, the fastest growing movement, not just in the UK that gave us Brexit, uh, but also in Europe, pointing out what's really going on. Here it is. Mr. Farage, two and a half minutes. Thank you. As Mr. Muscovici said at the start of this, the leak of all these papers and lists of people with offshore holdings has come about because of the Society of Investigative Journalists. But what's not been said this morning, and I think is relevant, is that the funding of these investigations came from one George Soros. Now, I say this at a time I'm going to come back to so what, and it may have some personal interest for you as well. I say this at a time when the use of money and the influence it may have had on the Brexit result or the Trump election has reached a level of virtual hysteria. Just last week, the Electoral Commission in the UK launched an investigation to find out whether the Leave campaign took offshore money or Russian money. This came about as a result of questions asked in the House of Commons by one Ben Bradshaw, somebody linked to an organisation called Open Society. I just wonder when we're talking about offshore money, when we're talking about political subversion, when we're talking about collusion, I wonder whether we're looking in the wrong place. And I say that because George Soros recently gave Open Society, his organization, which of course campaigns for free movement of peoples and supports supranational structures like the European Union, he recently gave it $18 billion. And his influence here and in Brussels is truly extraordinary. Open Society boast that they had 42 meetings last year with the European Commission. They've even published a book of reliable friends in the European Parliament. And there are 226 names on that list 
including yours, sir. I thought, I thought you'd find this interesting. We even had last week Mr. Verhofstadt lobbying on behalf of Mr. Soros at the Conference of Presidents in a battle that is going on with Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary. If we're going to have a debate and we're, and we're going to talk about full political and financial transparency, well, let's do it. So I should be writing today to all 226 of you, asking some pretty fair questions. Have you ever received funds, directly or indirectly, from open society? How many of their events have you attended? Could you please give us a list of the meetings of all the representatives, including George Soros yourself? And I think this parliament should now set up a special committee to look into all of this. And I say that because I fear we could be looking at the biggest level of international political collusion in history. And I've said this thousands of times. They change it to Russia because they're bringing in globalism. These multinational groups like TPP that literally do conquer us, they're scared, so they wanted to turn the investigation around. And now it's blowing up in their face. And now the EU army is announcing it's taking over. And one day after, five countries say they're ready to repel the invasion. This is kind of shaping up almost like pre-World War II in a weird way. You got Juncker, the heir of the Nazis, threatening the U.S., running the unelected EU. How does this fit into your equation, Mr. Dent? Well, you know, again, I've been waiting on this uh, for 20 years now, Alex. In, in the roaring 2000s, my best-selling book, I brought in this whole network revolution, bottom to up. Now, again, free market capitalism and democracy were the first bottoms up revolution in all of history. Everything was top down, aristocracy controlled since then. This is deeper. We've got back down with central banks have taken over. And we need an economy globally that can let everybody be their own thing and grow from the bottoms up, like you said, from organizations that you favor and not from some top-down sort of thing, all of this stuff can survive together if they all have their own spaces and their own support and the system can accommodate I was about it. to say, and won't, won't the globalists themselves, the good, the bad, the ugly, destroy themselves making this existential fight with nationalism a real thing? Don't they get they're going to lose? No, no, okay, they think they're going to lose because they, they're controlling things from the top down. Bottoms up. Say, look, the stock exchanges operate totally from the bottoms up, not top down, and they only get bigger and bigger. You can have global and you can have bottom up. What we have now is global and top down, and that's the problem. Everything in this book, everything I've written for 20, 30 years has said we need a bottoms up revolution like in the late 1700s, only information. No, I know you've been calling it. You've been calling it for 20 years. I'm saying yep. how nasty is it going to get? Because they've signaled they're going to get very violent. Uh, look, it is going to get now. That's what we're saying. You can't have a revolution. Look, I mean, they were cutting off heads in France, and we had the Revolutionary War in the United States. It is nasty. Revolutions are never easy, but they are necessary, and they come at times like this. Again, I can't stop the revolution. I can't stop all the cycles I'm looking at. All I can do is help people prepare for it. Again, protect the wealth you have now at the top of this bubble. Don't hold out for more live in the safest place you can live in, and be prepared for change and to take advantage of it. It's just that simple. That's right. There's going to be major breakdown, major crime. We've tried to prop this yeah. thing up, but once it goes south, they're going to unloose their, their hordes, the communists. It's going to be, thank God we have the Second Amendment, but folks, zero hour available at Harry Dent's website, uh, harrydent.com. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Okay, thank you, Alec. Yeah, I've got four children, and uh, I've studied history, and it does repeat itself, and the elites are all digging in, and Trump's tried to get things going again. They're trying to block him. I think we could have made it out of this, and we, but it's now them trying to block it. It's, it's probably going to completely blow up, and when it does, folks, when it does, <laughs> I just say prop it up as long as we can because <laughs> when it blows, I tell you, it's going to be bad. Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own 
air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war. Pathogens added to the food and water and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality, turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.